Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at the town of Wareham in Dorset. It's about eight miles to the uh, southwest of Poole and we're going to be doing a roughly five mile circular route in two parts. The first part will be having a look round the out skirts and the perimeter of the town itself and in the second part we'll be uh, taking a river walk. We'll actually be seeing a couple of rivers. Now the town itself has got a, a tremendous, a very interesting past uh, and a lot of history attached to it. So I don't want this to become too much of a history lesson. So in the first part as I go around I'll keep everything fairly brief and condensed. Now I'm filming at the beginning of October the sun is out and there's a nice breeze, should be perfect for walking, so do come along with us. Well I parked my car at one of the central car parks, Howard's Lane I think it was called, £2.80 for four hours. Now Wareham was built in a very strategic position between two rivers, the River Piddle in the north, no tittering there, and the River Froom in the south and the current town was founded by the Saxons. It's uh, Old English Ware, e, that means fish trap or weir, and Ham, homestead. And Arthur Mee in his King's England Book of Dorset, published in the late 1930s, described it as, and I quote, a romantic and unforgettable town. Now one of the big features of Wareham is the steep bank that surrounds it. You can probably see it just behind me here. And it's likely to have been built by Alfred the Great in the 9th century to defend the town against the Danes. Indeed, the Danes invaded and occupied Wareham in 876. Alfred returned with an army and made a payment of Dane gold, basically a tax to the Danes to stop further invasions of the town, although I think they did invade afterwards. But by the end of the Saxon period it had become one of the most important towns in Dorset and indeed it housed two mints for the issue of royal money. It became an important port, however the growth of Poole and the gradual silting up of the river caused a decline in the 13th century. Well, so I'll tell you a little bit more about the history as we carry on with the walk, but I'm actually going to start our walk at the sort of north eastern end of the wall. Well here I am at the top of the uh, bank on the northern side so this is looking southwards uh, towards the town and this area is known as the Bowling Green and you can probably just about make out a, a sort of rectangular shape there, earthworks which are, I'm guessing may have been a Bowling Green and it was possibly used for archery practice here in the past and indeed there were there were fairs here going back many years ago. So just panning round, we'll start our walk along the bank there where those folk are just ahead of us. Well this is just looking north from the bank. You probably hear a road in the background that's uh, a bypass that goes around the town. And down there's the, the river Piddle, one of my uh, favourite names for a river in Dorset. It uh, rises at Alton Pancras and it's 18 and a half miles long and it flows into Poole Harbour. It's had various names and spellings over the years. So this is a floodplain out there. Oh, I don't know if you can see just in front of that uh, telegraph pole there some deer munching away on that uh, very lush vegetation out there. This is St Martin's Church and it's one of the oldest surviving buildings in the town at what was uh, the North Gate and uh, it's the most complete example of an Anglo-Saxon church in uh, Dorset. 
It was founded by St Aldham in the 7th century, but the building was destroyed by a Dane in 1015. The present building dates from 1030. The Anglo-Saxon features include a tall, narrow nave and chancel, and the building has been extended and expanded over the years, but the tiny window on the north side of the chancel is one of the original features. The porch and tower are 16th century, but uh, the church fell into disuse after 1736, and a restoration programme commenced at the start of the 20th century, and it was rededicated in 1936. Let's have a peep inside. Okay, in we go. Hopefully the, the light is going to be okay in here. It's quite a sunny day outside. Oh wow, look at this. Isn't that beautiful? Gosh. Wow. What can I say? Now, the thing I want to have a really good look at is this effigy that's over here. Can you recognise him? It's uh, T.E. Lawrence, or Lawrence of Arabia fame. And, uh, the sculpture of this was a chap called Eric Kennington, an official war artist in both world wars. And it was originally made for St Paul's Cathedral, but uh, due to um, political unrest, uh, it wasn't accepted. It was then offered to Westminster Abbey. They then said no. And then it was offered to Salisbury Cathedral, and they didn't want it. So it came here in 1939 due to his connection with uh, Dorset. Uh, he's actually buried at uh, Morton. But as you can see, he's got, uh, I'll get out the, the light, Arabic dress, and uh, he's holding what looks like a, a curved dagger. And then just coming down here, his feet are resting on a block of Hittite sculpture of, it's supposed to be two fighting bulls, which uh, represent uh, his archeological research and struggles in World War I. And then, just want to have a quick look at the top. Yes, his head, I don't know if you can see there, is resting on a, uh, a sort of camel's saddle, I believe. And then there are three books down by his left-hand side of his head. Um, he always used to carry those books with him. I now have made my way onto the northwest side of the town still on the wall and from here wow well, we've got some terrific views you can probably see behind me so this is looking sort of northwards uh, we've left the church incidentally as i was uh, coming down the side of the church i noticed what looked like the, the remains of a, a pillbox in the side fascinating so just in the distance there that's the north bridge i think it's got uh, three arches these days it has been altered over the centuries and then just in front of me here is the old north mill and there was a mill recorded here back in 1150 and it was working until the the 19th century and then just panning around there's the the river piddle again and uh, its floodplain <laughs> Well, this is as far west as we're going on the walk. We're now going to change direction, still following the wall and heading southwards. So we're going to say goodbye temporarily to the River Piddle. It shoots off there, but so we will be seeing it later on in the Homeward Leg. Well, it was a lovely walk and uh, very helpful 
that there are some information boards dotted around the walk giving the history of the place and indeed I've just passed one that explained uh, the various stages of how the uh, bank and wall was built and this bit that I'm on now on the western side is known as the bloody bank and it really is quite steep here and the reason it's called bloody bank or bloody banks in uh, 1213 a hermit called Peter de Pomfret and his son were alleged to have been tied to uh, a horse's tail and dragged from Corfe Castle to here and hanged for professing that uh, King John's unstable and brutal reign would come to a premature end. And indeed this was a traditional site for hanging, hence the name. And after the Monmouth Rebellion of 1685, Wareham was one of a number of towns in Dorset where Judge Jeffreys held the bloody assizes and five rebels were hanged, drawn and quartered at this very spot. Well, the western wall continues south from here, but uh, I think this bit's on private land. And just round the corner there, there was once a Norman castle finished in 1110. And I was reading that half the town was destroyed to make room for it. But by the 14th century, it had become abandoned and, and fell into decay. I think uh, there's an Edwardian house now that covers the remains. But there is something to look at just over on the other side of this little bank here. Now this little area here is the old pound and it dates from the medieval period, about 800 years ago I believe. And it held stray or impounded farm animals and the owner had to pay a fine to the lord of the manor to release the animal or it would be sold if not claimed. <laughs> and look there's still an old hook on the wall there. Obviously it's now been uh, left as a, a little uh, amenity for the, the public. And this is our second church of the walk. It's formerly the Church of Holy Trinity, a 14th century nave and chancel with a 16th century west tower and an 18th century north chapel. But it wasn't used uh, after the Great Fire of 1762 that destroyed much of the, the town and it's now a, a community cafe and just uh, panning over there's a lovely Victorian pump on the other side of the road there. Well, I've made my way to the south of the town and uh, just crossed a bridge over our second river of the walk, the, the River Froome, and we'll be seeing a fair bit of that later on. But I'm now at the, uh, the Wareham Quay that's just behind me here. And it's one of uh, those uh, photogenic sites in Dorset, the southern bridge there and uh, the quay. In fact there's a Saturday market here I believe and then over the other side the quay inn and that was built in 1747 and it was called the Shovel and Crown until 1930 then it became known as the New Inn until 1988. Well, this is a little interesting thing to look at here just on the uh, southern bank of the river near the uh, southern bridge and it's a, a sort of community performance platform that was built in 2006 made of local Purbeck stone and it's basically for local actors, musicians, poets and storytellers. What a lovely setting uh, right next to the, uh, to the river. Imagine you can come out and uh, read your poems on a nice summer's evening before you pop back into the Key Inn for a pint of ale. Oh, isn't this quite delightful? I think this was one of the cottages that survived that uh, the great fire that was in the town. <laughs> I love the, the ducks uh, on top of the thatched up there. And this is our third church of the walk, the Priory Church of Lady St Mary. Anglo-Saxon origins. The church was built around 705 AD along with a, a nunnery that was uh, rebuilt in 900 AD. And it's notable for the possible burial place of King Beorthric. I think that's how you 
say his name, the King of Wessex anyway from 786 to 802 and it's built of Purbeck limestone. So a south chapel was added in the 12th century and the west tower added in the 16th century and the nave and aisles they were rebuilt between 1840 and 1842 but after the dissolution of monasteries the the priory was suppressed I think the site now is a hotel and the church was acquired by the townspeople. Well that's part one of the walk over say so Wareham has got so much history I probably haven't done it justice in this video but uh, hopefully it gives you a little bit of flavour anyway. So part two we're basically going to be walking along the uh, northern bank of the River Froome. It should be a quite exquisite walk. In fact, the walk that we're on now is one of the uh, six walks. It's part of the Pool Harbour Trail, basically a series of walks that takes you around Pool Harbour. I think we're on walk number four, which uh, goes um, from Wareham Quay to Sanford. Now, Pool Harbour itself is uh, said to be the second largest natural harbour in the world. The largest? I think it's Sydney, isn't it? And this is the River Froome again. It's uh, 30 miles long and starts life as a chalk stream rising in the Dorset Downs at Evershot, about seven miles uh, south of uh, Yeovil. You can see so uh, it is tidal, so uh, that's why I've got so many of these uh, boats and yachts moored up. starting to cloud over now which is a shame. We're just on the uh, other side of the uh, river bank there that's the uh, Redcliffe Yacht Club founded in 1933 and the club house was rebuilt in uh, 1987. It gets its name from the nearby red sandstone cliff that overlooks it and the the club flag has a yellow king cup or marsh marigold in the centre as uh, seen often in flower on the bank in summer. Well we can't have too many of these left now Logan. A few black ones floating around. I'll get one off for you. Well that one for you. So not quite as juicy as they were a few weeks ago but worth a pit stop nonetheless. Well it really is a, an enchanting walk along the river here. I've seen two kingfishers I've never managed to photograph one. As soon as you get the camera out, <laughs> the blighters have gone. But, uh, so peaceful along here. I'm no expert on boats, but uh, some of them along here uh, look quite impressive to say the least. Oh, I love this little section of the walk here. Still by the river, but it's a little wooded section. No, it's uh, giving us a little bit of shade. I mean, it's not a hot day today, but um, it just, I always love it when you get the sun sort of coming through the, the trees and the foliage from above. And some of the leaves just beginning to show signs of going uh, that golden brown. The depths of autumn are not that far away. Well this is a, an interesting part of the walk on the uh, southern side of the bank. It's the uh, Ridge Wharf Yacht Centre and the yacht club there was established in 1965. But there's something like 170 berths on pontoons, staging and river moorings here. But it's a very historic area as um, it was once a major trading wharf for clay which was quarried from the Purbeck Hills up until around about 1900. And uh, clay indeed was a very important industry in the area. It was transported along a tramway here 
and then loaded onto barges to go to Poole and then onto Liverpool and onto the potteries. And apparently the Portland clay was very good for working pottery and was much sought after. Anyway, the tramway was the Fursbrook Narrow Gauge Railway. It was three and a half miles long. It all closed in 1957, although the engine shed is still there. And this is looking uh, to the west, back towards Wareham, and you can see there's a lake there. It's an old gravel pit. And gravel was extracted here as recently as 2005. There's something like 55 hectares. It's now been left to nature and looks like uh, a fair few Canadian geese out there as well. A lot of history attached to the place. Loads of Mesolithic, Neolithic, Iron and Bronze Age activity was discovered in archaeological digs. Indeed, they uncovered the largest collection of Middle Bronze Age pottery in the country at this location. And the sun's come out again. Now, if you're going to be following this walk after seeing the video, which I know a few folk do, this is um, just the one thing to look out for. The signpost behind me uh, to the left, you can uh, take uh, a path back to Wareham, but we're just going to carry on a little bit further on the right there uh, because just panning round. We're now going to say goodbye to the River Froome as it heads out into Poole Harbour and very shortly we'll be meeting the River Piddle again. Well we saw some gravel pits that had turned into little lakes earlier on but this one really is quite impressive with a little island in the middle as well. Beautiful. Well, this is as far east as we're going to go on the walk. Looking out into the distance there, I think that's Arn Hill and uh, Arn Heath. And then those little white things in the very far distance, I think that's the Rockley Sands Holiday Park on the other side of the, uh, the Wareham Channel. Well, we're very much on the homeward leg now, heading uh, westwards back towards Wareham. Now somewhere out there hidden amongst all those reeds is the River Piddle. <laughs> Unfortunately we did get a decent view of it right at the beginning when we were on top of one of those uh, walls. So you're gonna have to take my word for it. It is, is out there somewhere. <laughs> just come through a quite delightful little shaded track uh, past Besswall Park. And the origin of Besswall comes from East Wall and sure enough and we're back onto the outskirts of Wareham and this is the the eastern wall just behind me here. So uh, we're close to the end of the walk. Well folks we've come to the end of our walk. We thought we'd do the end scene here by the river. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment. As I always say, please do uh, check out our uh, Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks. And if you haven't already done so, uh, please do subscribe. That way, hopefully, you'll be able to join us for another walk sometime in the future. We're going to finish off the walk with uh, some light refreshment back at the Key Inn. So until we meet again, thanks for watching and Shirio. Good boy. Now he's not going to do a water dip today.